What's up guys, Velocity from Pitchfork Academy, back with another quick Unreal Engine 5 tutorial. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how to set up a custom hardware-based cursor, which feels extremely responsive on your screen, unlike the software-based cursors that a lot of tutorials show you how to set up. If you're interested at all in how to set up a main menu to use this new cursor with, I definitely recommend checking out Mizo's tutorial on this channel about how to set up a main menu inside of Unreal Engine 5. There will be a link to that in the top right of the video right now. And he goes in depth on how to set up a main menu with buttons and functions to actually play your game from the menu itself, which is a great way to visualize and use the cursor that we'll be creating today. But just before we jump in, I've got an exciting announcement to share. I've officially launched my Patreon. That's where you can get access to Velocity's Vault, which will hold all the project files from Velocity's past and future Unreal Engine 5 tutorials. They're not all up just yet, but I'll be adding them steadily as I go. This is the best way to support me so I can continue to bring you high quality Unreal Engine tutorials. Right now it's half off until November, so it's the perfect time to jump on board. You'll find the Patreon link down in the description. And don't forget, you can also join our free Discord, the Pitchfork Academy, if you want to connect with other creators or maybe even get some help with one of your projects. All right, here we are in a default version of Unreal Engine 5.6. However, this will work on any version of the engine. The first thing that I want to do is to create the folder structure that our cursor will eventually go into. So I'll right click in my content browser and create a new folder. I'll name this UI for user interface. And then inside of the UI folder, I'll right click and create another folder called cursors. And you would think that the cursor would go directly into this folder, like you would drag it in, but that's actually not the case. We want to drag it into the file explorer. So for example, I'll right click on this folder and then click show in explorer. And then that will open up the actual file directory on your computer. So for example, we have our um, folder for our projects, the name of the project, content, and then we have UI, that's the folder we created, and then the subfolder for cursors. And this is where you want to drag in your PNG image for your cursor. If you already have one, that's where you want to put this. Let's go ahead really quickly and hop over to PhotoP, and that's a free Photoshop program that you can basically create images with. There's a website, I'll link it in the description. I have the program downloaded on my computer. There's really no difference besides ones on the website, and one is a program. And let's just really quickly create a custom cursor. All right, so here we are in PhotoP, and this is just a really quick way to create a custom cursor. I'm not gonna go too in-depth here. Of course, you can go as in-depth as you like and make it as custom as you could possibly imagine. But for this tutorial, I'll just make a simple custom cursor. So I'll click New Project, and then I'll set the width to be 64 by 64. You could also set this to 32 by 32 if you want it to be a little bit smaller. I'll click Create. And then to zoom in, you just hold Alt and scroll in, or scroll up. And then on the left, we want to find in the toolbar, the shape. So I'll go all the way down until I find a shape. Yours might be on a square or rectangle, uh, but I use parametric shape last, so it's on that. You wanna select parametric shape to get a triangle. But of course you can make your shape anything that you like. Once you have that selected, go to the top and click the little drop down arrow here for sides and then drag it all the way to the left. And now when you click and drag, you'll get a triangle. So just click and drag it until it's about this big maybe. And then at the top left, go back to the move tool. You could also click V on your keyboard and it will go back to moves. So now when you click and move your mouse, it'll move the cursor around. And then I want to just stretch the triangle down a bit. So I'll hold shift on my keyboard and then click and drag this bottom pin. You might have to click it twice. I think that's good for now. And then you just need to accept it here at the top. Click firm on the little checkbox. And then I just want to rotate it until this side is lined up parallel with the left side of the image. So just hover over the top right corner here and rotate it until it looks about perfect. And then once you have that, just drag it up to the top left like so and click accept. Now to make it a little bit more interesting, I'll double click on my shape on the right here and then it'll open up a layer styles panel. I'll select the color overlay and set it and then click on this box here and set it to be fully white. And then I'll also select bevel and emboss and then click on that box there. And then I'll set the um, inner bevel style to emboss. Actually, I might leave it on inner bevel. That looks quite nice. And then I'll just click okay here. 
And then the last step that we need to do is remove the background. To remove the background, click this little lock here on the right, and then click the background again and delete it. Now you'll see that you have the transparent checkerboard background, and that's good. That means that our shape will be transparent and we only get the triangle. I'll just click on my shape once more and use the arrow keys to bump it up into the left. Just so it lines up a little bit. It doesn't need to touch all the way, but you can if you like mess around with that, but this should be more than enough um, for accuracy. And now that you have that, you can go ahead and click File, Export As, and then PNG. I'll name mine Cursor and click Save. It should download, and then what you can do is just browse to that image. Um, you can show in folder, and then I'll just drag this to the side for now. And then if I minimize my photo P, you'll see that I still have opened the folder from our content browser. So again, um, you go into your content UI and then right click on your content or your cursor folder and click show and Explorer. And then this is where you want to drag in your new image. I'll just rename mine really quickly to cursor default because I had a, another one in there. So that was putting the one next to it. So now we have cursor default and I'll just drag it in to this folder. Now that we have that here, it'll give us a little message on the bottom right. You can import it if you like. It also really doesn't matter because it's still in the project files as a PNG, but I'll just go ahead and click import so we have a visual that it's in here. So if I double click on cursor, you can see it in here like so. But this is technically the U asset, not the PNG. The PNG should be in our other folder. So if I go back to UI and right click on cursors and show in Explorer, you'll see that we have a PNG in here. So if I hover over this, it says item type PNG. That's very important. This lets the computer know that it's usable with the cursor because it's not usable with U assets. So this is important and this is very good. Now all we need to do is go up to our edit tab here at the top and go to project settings. And then we wanna find the cursors. And then we want to add a hardware cursor. Software cursor is a little bit different. It uses widget blueprints, which can be a little bit more dynamic, but they're not tied to your computer's frame rate. So they feel quite laggy in my opinion. Hardware cursors are extremely responsive because it goes off of the FPS, um, just like based off of your, your hardware. Um, so it's, it feels way more responsive. So you wanna click plus here next to map elements. And then here on the dropdown, select default. You also have all of these other options. For example, if you have a text editor in your game, you could have a different cursor for that and it'll recognize that you're trying to edit text when hovering a text box. And you could click this and then, or you could create basically another element and have one for default, one for text editing, etc. We'll just select default for this. And then on cursor path, we just want to type in the exact cursor path and the name of the cursor. So in this case, we can go back to our um, folder. So here I have UI slash cursors slash cursor default. It's very important that you type it in exactly as it's named in your project browser with capital letters and everything to be perfect. So that looks great. And you don't have to save this or anything. Um, unless you're working with version control, you would want to check out your, your uh, project settings file, of course. Um, but now we're good to clear this search for cursor. And the last step we want to search for additional non-asset. Oh, whoops, I need to spell that right. Additional, there we go. And we wanna find additional non-asset directories to package. This makes sure that when you package your game, it knows to include the PNG file because by default, it would only include U asset files. So we need to basically override that and anything in this UI cursors folder, we want to package as well. So just click the little plus here. And then in the index here, we want to find, you could type it in, but to be safe, you can click these little three dots and choose a directory from the computer and then find your project. So here's my cursor project. And then if I go into content, UI and then double click cursors and then just go to the bottom right and select folder. So now it knows to package everything in this folder as an additional asset to package, basically any of the PNGs that you use for your cursors. Now I can close out of my project settings. And if I go ahead and select these little three dots here and play from new editor window, 
you'll see we have our new cursor. Of course, when I click, it's going to go into play mode and the cursor will disappear. But as soon as I click Shift F1 to go back to maybe my UI mode or my main menu or my pause menu, the new custom cursor will appear. All right, guys, that's going to do it for this tutorial on how to set up a hardware based cursor, which feels very smooth and responsive on the screen, unlike the software based cursors. Again, if you're interested in how to set this up with a menu and just be able to have something to use the cursor with, definitely go check out Mizo's tutorial on how to set up a basic main menu. It's structured really well and is a great starting point to create the menu system for your game, and you'll be able to visualize and use your new hardware cursor. This has been Velocity with Pitchfork Academy, and I'll see you in the next one.